Okay, here is our second example from deducing the empirical formula of binary ionic compounds from its name. We notice here that we again have uh, variant metal complexes. Here's iron 3, so we have the stock system. And so I've pulled again our guide, our little cheat sheet for how to deal with these variant metal compounds. Let's look at potassium fluoride first. This is an ionic compound. I know it's made up of cations and anions. And so potassium metal ion, let's write the chemical formula of potassium metal ion, K plus one. Fluoride is our anion derived from fluorine, the F minus one. And I know the charges of these, I can predict the charges of these because these are both main group elements. Potassium being in group 1A, I can predict its charge to be plus one. Fluorine, fluor, uh, fluorine being uh, halogen in group 7A, I can predict its charge to be minus one. So now that I have the cations and anions written, I use the crisscross shortcut to figure out what these subscripts would be, one and one. And of course, this simplifies to Kf. So there's our empirical formula. Well, let's look at the second example. We have iron three chloride. Let's write the cation, Fe, iron. It is not a main group element though. So how can I predict which, which, uh, which charge, what charge this iron ion has. It could be Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus. Which one is it? Well, the stock system tells me that. When we have variant metal compounds, metals that are not uh, group 1A, 2A, or aluminum 3 plus, we use the stock system to indicate the charge of that metal. The stock system here tells me that the charge is 3 plus. It's a metal, so it will be a cation. Chloride, derived from chlorine, again is a halogen just like fluoride, so Cl minus 1. Let's use the stock system, uh, the, the crisscross method again. Take the value of those charges, and this gives me Fe1Cl3. Simplified, this would be FeCl3. We don't have to write the one as a subscript. But let's double check ourselves to make sure that this makes sense. This tells me for every one iron three plus ion, I have three chloride anions. Well, what's the charge of this iron three plus ion? A three plus. What's the charge of each chloride anion? Minus one. So because this compound is neutral by definition, the charge of the cations must be canceled by the charges of the anions. So if empirical formula gives me the ratio of cation to anion, not the actual number, but the ratio, this makes sense. For every one of these, I have three of these to cancel out the charges. So my empirical formula would be FeCl3.